Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be going over my May empties. This is actually April and May because I've been doing these about every two months now, but I have a giant bin here. There's actually so much, it doesn't all fit in frame or in this little basket. So there's a lot to talk about. If you like empties videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. There's a lot to go over though, so let's just get started. All right, so as I mentioned, there is a lot to go over. I've been really trying to just finish up things that are maybe 25% full or just things around the house like that have one or two uses left and just kind of get them out of here and start fresh with products. So that's a little bit why there's so many here. Let's just go into categories starting with nail care. So I have two nail cuticle pens and then I have a base coat and a top coat. The top coat is from KB Shimmer. This is their Clearly On Top. I do really like this top coat. It's inexpensive for an indie brand. It does the job. It's not my favorite, but I finished this up. There is like 30% in here. And then this is a base coat from Sweet and Sour Lacquer. You can't see it, but it was like green tinted to just kind of give your nails a good base, solid base coat, nothing to complain about this, but it was time to just get that last a little bit out of there. And then I have two nail oil pens. So one was from Pie Colors, and I don't think this had a scent or I don't remember if it did. It did, but it smells not good. This was terrible. I didn't like this cuticle oil and the bar is low when it comes to cuticle oil. So for me to not like it, I don't, I just didn't. I do, however, love this brand. This is Anchor and Heart and this is their vitamin C cuticle oil. This was the scent Cucumber Mint, smelled exactly like that. I do prefer these little brush style tips for applying cuticle oil. So you just kind of click it and oil will come up. The only just downside of this is there's not a lot of product. It's very easy to finish one. I can finish one up in maybe a week. I apply cuticle oil pretty regularly, at least once a day, if not more. So that's the only downside. However, I have to say the applicator style is the best way. And then I think going into cuticle oil, that'll then bring us into lotions. Lotion, I have a lot. So let's go over these two samples first. The first is from The Body Shop. This is British Rose for normal skin, vegan sample. This was fine. Don't, don't have any thoughts other than that. And then this one is the Soap and Glory You Butter Glow body butter. I really actually remember liking this a lot. It was a very nourishing. I would probably pick this up. I don't think you can get soap and glory in France. I'd have to see. So if it's something I can only buy in the States, I probably would not prioritize that. Sometimes there are beauty products that I'll get in America. If you're new to my channel, I live in France. I used to live in America for quite a long time and I relocated to Europe in 2018. So there are still products that I love and bring back. However, I don't know if I would prioritize a lotion because it is pretty heavy. So not really worth it to me when there's probably equally as good lotions here. And then three other lotions. Let's see. I have this one. So this is from KL Polish and this is their hand cream. KL Polish is no longer. However, I stocked up on a bunch of these hand creams when they went out of business. They're really nice. It's thin. You know, I don't really prefer a hand cream so much only because I can just use a lotion. Like I don't know what necessarily sets apart a lotion into a hand cream when I could just use a cuticle oil, but it is a nice lotion, not necessarily just for your hands. And then this is the BASD Invigorating Body Lotion. This came in some sort of sample and it says invigorating body lotion. This is literally, it's like a body lotion that's like Bengay. Like it just gets hot. It's weird. I don't like it. It's very minty and maybe that's nice for some people, but if I need that kind of product, like I'll just use Icy Hot. It's not, this is not something I just would go out of my way to purchase. And the last lotion type product is this bad boy. So this is the Hemp's. Sweet Pineapple and Honey Melon Lotion. 
I stalled and stalled and stalled finishing this because I hate the pump. I'm just over this. I think this is my last hemp's pump bottle in my just reserve of body care products. Thank God. This was a really nice lotion. It makes me sad. I might figure out some kind of DIY situation with this in the future once I get through all of my products. But other than that, the pump stops like right here. And then after that, I have to take the pump and scoop it out like this every single time. So it just becomes a huge hassle. I don't understand why they put such a thick lotion in a pump style. I would much rather it just be in a squeezy tube or in a tub. Either way, if they did that, I would absolutely keep buying this. Loved the scent, but I cannot continue because I don't reach for the lotion because of how much of a pain this was. And that's why I don't have more lotion empties because I was just stalling on using this up. And finally, I was like, no more. I need to get rid of it. Some more body care. I just want to quickly go over because I have had this in every single empties since I started my empty series. So this is the Bees Knees Lacquer Meringues. It's like a tub of soap. So meringue is the perfect term. It's like a buttercream type of texture. And clearly I love them. I had so many. I mean, I go through about one every two weeks, which is why I have four here. And considering that I've been doing empties for about a year, I mean, do the math on how many of these that I have. And I'm almost, almost done. I have, I think three or four left. So super excited to just kind of stop using this and maybe go into a different soap. They're very nice soaps. I have nothing bad to say about them. I have the sense, which better have my candy, very fruity. The names are always very nice. The Under King, it's you, it's me, it's us. The owner, this is an indie company. The owner also does polish and she reads a lot. So a lot of her collections are based on books and Fallon. So that's all I have to say about that. I've talked about this product enough on my channel for you to know my thoughts. Clearly I love it if I've been using it over a year. And the last body care was the Kapari Pink Souffle Body Mask. Detoxifying, clarifying, and brightening. I have been enjoying most of Kapari's products. I don't know if I would like go out and buy a body mask. It's not something I would ever like want to do, but I enjoyed using this little sample while I had it. There's just nothing, nothing drawing me into using that kind of product consistently. Let's get hair care and fragrance out of the way because then we just have the big daddy ones of skincare and makeup. For hair care, this is a scalp scrub. This is the Perfect Shine Clarifying Scalp Scrub. I've had like six samples of this and I have to say I thoroughly enjoy all the samples. I maybe have like one or two samples left and this is something that I would repurchase. I don't use a scalp scrub that often or I never really used to before getting these in so many samples, so many. I, I think I have like 10 of these, but now that I've used them that often, I actually really like it and I like having it part of my routine. It's something I would miss once I run out of those. That's all the hair stuff though. And for fragrance, this is the Vince Camuto Florally. This fragrance came with the full size when I purchased it. It's somewhere behind me if you can see it right there. It came in a holiday set. I think I purchased it. So I don't really like having travel size fragrances around, especially when I have so much fragrance. So I just finished this up. It was about halfway full. It just needed to go. And now I have the full size. I'm happy with that. And then this is the Kalali Love Fest Burning Cherry. I picked this up purposely. I just said that I don't like fragrances, but I did pick this up. I ended up picking up the 10 milliliter of the Yum Pistachio Gelato. I like this little small size. There's no reason I need to get a full size or a larger size. This is cute enough for me. If I run out of it through all my fragrance, I'll buy a bigger one. But I purchased Burning Cherry. I think that they sell their little samples for $2 to $4. I don't remember exactly. But this one was kind of interesting. And 
honestly, it was, it's been a while now. I think it's it's been over a month. I bought this whenever this came out. So it's been quite some time and I don't remember what I think of this. So I think that that is clear to tell me it's not on my list to repurchase. I don't need it. Let's now talk about makeup. I don't always have makeup empties. So it's always, it's an extra special video when I actually have some makeup empties. And a lot of these are from Project Pan. So if you like Project Pan videos, I do also do that and do updates every three months. I'll link the playlist up above. But some of my Project Pan items that I finished were these. So the first was the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 Setting Spray. You know, this has been around for quite a long time. It was one of the oldest things in my collection, and not even just my oldest setting spray, but one of the oldest things in my collection. And I'm so happy that it's finished. The next one was a primer. So this is the Dior Capture Total Multi Perfection Makeup Base Sunscreen. This was in every single one of my description boxes. I always link all the makeup that I'm wearing down below, and without fail, I could just copy and paste this over. I always used it. It looks like there's still product in here, but nothing else pumps out. That's the best I can get it. And the top doesn't come off. I actually cracked it trying to get the top off. It does not come off. So I'm counting it as empty. And you know, I liked this. I wouldn't rebuy it. It's just overpriced for what it is. It has sunscreen in it. You know, it's just a hydrating primer. It was nothing special. I liked using it while I used it. I felt bougie, but other than that, there's no reason to have a primer like this. I'm glad that it's empty. And then I think the one that I'm most proud of is this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Powder in One Fair. This took me so much longer to finish than I thought it was going to take me because when I pulled this into Project Pan, the ring was, you know, down to there. Like there was really just a small amount left and it still took me six months to finish it. Like once I feel like the pan comes, it takes forever to like get through that product. So I was really happy to just finish this. This is my favorite under eye setting powder as of right now and I will repurchase it. However, I'm just trying to get through a few more of my powders first before I do repurchase it. I'm going to hang strong until then and resist adding more to my collection until I finish up a few more powders. And then not exciting is this little package here. This is from Ulta Beauty and this was their on the go makeup wipes. There was only five in here, so it wasn't like it took me long to finish. I don't purchase makeup wipes. This came as a sample. It's just not something I like. And quite honestly, it had five makeup wipes in here and I maybe used two and then the package was completely dried out. Even though it has a little sticker to keep it fresh, it dried out. I had to like re-dampen it to take swatches off. So if I did purchase makeup wipes, they would not be those. And the last makeup item is a mascara. So this is the L'Oreal Telescopic mascara and this is specifically in brown so I only open one mascara at a time and then I use it until it's done this was nice I actually started using this before the telescopic lift even came out and mascara gate was like an even a thing that just is a weird coincidence this must be a different version of their line or older I'm not really sure Here's what the brush looks like it's not the same as the telescopic lift as far as I know I didn't purchase that so this was an okay mascara. I am wearing it today. Today was the last time and I was like, this is, this is done. This isn't something I would run out and repurchase. I don't think it made my lashes look amazing. I don't think it made them look bad. I like the Rare Beauty better. This is like, okay, if I had to like emergency get a mascara and needed one and this was the only one in the drugstore, I'd be happy with it. But other than that, like, I don't think this is anything unique or special. We're actually making pretty good time. Last category is skincare. So there's always a lot. Now, I do have a lot of samples because I just had a lot of samples in my life and I'm trying to prioritize getting rid of those first. However, I did finally make the decision, I learned a little bit, that instead of talking about them as I empty them, I kind of group them together if I had the same sample and then I talk about it once I use them all up. Before I was just grabbing out of my bin random things when I needed them and now I kind of just group them together. So for example, 
this cleanser here. Sorry, this is a moisturizer. The Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. I finished four of these. So it took me, I think, the entire two months. I had already started it the last time I had filmed an empties video. So I was in progress of finishing these. But before, I would just do one at a time and maybe talk about it again in three months. That seemed counterintuitive. So I finished four of these. I can talk about it once and that's it. Plus, it gave me time to really get my thoughts on this because I actually like wasn't a huge fan of this moisturizer. I use this as a day cream, not a night cream. It is very light. I liked this. However, just having the name Elemis on it, I know that this is probably very expensive and it's not worth whatever price tag it is. I don't know how much it is. I didn't look it up. But this to me is like a drugstore type of moisturizer. Those are the results that I get. So I know I just wouldn't want to pay the price that this probably is, if that makes any sense. There's some times where I'm fine paying a luxury price tag if I can notice a difference in quality of a product. And there's sometimes where it's just, it's not worth it. Of course, drugstore products can also be very effective. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this to me is not worth whatever price tag it is over $20. So I'm not going to repurchase it. However, I did really, really enjoy it. And I think that it is a nice moisturizer. If this is a cream that you use, I would love to just get your opinions on it. If you notice something different over time, because I didn't really notice anything. It kept my skin hydrated, but I just prefer something that's a little bit more rich feeling. So not a fan of this. I also finished two of these. So this is the Kinship Naked Papaya Gentle Enzyme Face Cleanser. I liked the smell of this, but I just don't like this product at all. It did smell good. At first I thought it was a Kapari product until I looked at the tag and I realized it wasn't. This, I'm just very specific about cleansers and it didn't do it for me. I like a more milky, creamy, foamy cleanser and this was not it. So wouldn't repurchase. I have more cleansers. Let's talk about this one. This one was terrible. So this is the Peach and Lily Power Calm Hydrating Gel Cleanser. I have four. These had, I mean, there's four. It looks like I went through a lot, but really this sample was not full. There's maybe two uses out of each of these. I don't like gel cleansers. I just said milky, creamy, foaming cleanser. So gel cleanser, not my jam, didn't like those. Now this was the latest cleanser I just finished. This is the La Roche Pousset. I have the Purifying Foaming Cleanser and the Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. Just threw them together since they're the same brand. Um, you know, the foaming cleanser was not very foaming and the Gentle Hydrating Cleanser, I liked this one a little bit more, but no, I didn't like this. It's actually a little bit funny because this is a French brand and using it, I could immediately tell that it was a French brand. I can't explain it, but I was born in France and there's something, there's something just like very nostalgic that reminded me of my grandma using these cleansers that I can't explain. If you know, you know, I could just tell that this was a French product. However, it's not, it's not something that I prefer. And I just thought it was interesting when I was using these that there's like this thinness and richness to them that just makes it stand out as a French brand. I can't explain it, but it really, it kind of just made me laugh that a cleanser would remind me of my grandmother, but it did. Let's go over these moisturizers here. This is the Drunk Elephant Polypeptide Cream. I have two, and then I have the Lala Retro Whipped Cream. I used to only be about this Lala Retro. I actually went through full size not too long ago, less than six months ago. I really like this moisturizer. However, the polypeptide, I think that I might convert to this. I've noticed now doing this a year plus and really just talking out loud on my thoughts of products that Drunk Elephant's not really my jam anymore. I think that they used to be heavily sponsored and that's why I kind of gravitated towards buying them. And now actually using their products more and more 
I don't really think they're worth the price tag. Similar to Elemis, it's just not something I see value in as much as I want to. So while this is a nice moisturizer, both of these, they're not something that I'd repurchase. There's been other moisturizers. I really like the Glowish Honey Whip moisturizer, really like the Youth to the People moisturizer, but I just prefer over these. However, I mean, I enjoyed the samples while I had them. It's not a bad product. Just like the LMS, like I said, it's just more money than I'm willing to spend for the results. Two more little sample cleansers here. Let's breeze through these. So I have the Kapari Tropical Glow Cleanser. Out of all the Kapari products that I've tried, because I, I think I had like a little trio. So I had the cleanser, I had the body souffle, and then I had a body wash. This was my least favorite. It had the same scent as the body wash, but the cleanser, there's something about it I just didn't, I did not like. It has the same scent, but it also doesn't smell good. It's very weird, but I didn't like this. I would not repurchase it. However, the body wash, top favorite. I even looked afterwards. I talked about this in my last empties, but the body wash is $20 and I can't imagine spending $20 on a body wash. However, I might because I really, really liked that body wash. And the last cleanser is the Bad Habit Wake Up Matcha and Mint Morning Cleanser. Out of all the cleansers I tried, there are quite a bit, as you saw. This was probably my favorite. It had like a very minty, just like it says, morning cleanser. So it was very minty, it was very fresh. It was a nice cleanser, but it still, it just wasn't that milky, foaming, gentle cleanser that I was really craving. Close, it was close. It was maybe an eight, but it was not, it was not a 10. I don't, no. Going over some eye things that I finished up. I have two of the eye patches. So the first one that I went through is the Pure Mellow Eyes Hemp Infused Eye Patches. I didn't know that Pure made eye patches. Don't know when I picked these up. They were in my just stash of eye patches and I think the whole hemp thing is overrated. I said it. I don't understand it in beauty products. I'm sure in some things like a lotion, a bath salt, etc. like it does something for an eye patch. It just doesn't, it just doesn't. All I needed to do is kind of be cooling, depuff a little bit and that's it. There was no calming anything. What's it supposed to do? Like there's nothing that this is supposed to do with, with the hemp. So it's nice, it's fine, I'd repurchase it, but it's not the top of my list. The Good Molecules is the least expensive option and does the same thing, so I would purchase that over this. The second one I went through that I finished yesterday is the Peter Thomas Roth, and this is the 24 Karat Gold Pure Luxury Lift and Firm. No, doesn't do anything. I don't wanna say it doesn't do anything. It does what a simple eye patch would do. There's nothing luxury that I noticed, no extra firming. This was not a magical eye patch where my eyes just looked instantly revived. Granted, take that with a grain of salt because I understand that I'm pretty fortunate with my under eyes. I don't have that many under eye wrinkles or anything like that, despite how much I squint. But I didn't notice anything. Good Molecules is better. And these eye patches, I got them half off and I got them because I got them half off on a deal. I was like, oh, I need to try these. I'm pretty sure these are at least 50, if not more for this. So I just, I would never spend that much full price on these ever, never. They were not anything unique or special that the Good Molecules does not do. Finishing up eyes, I have this little sample, but I don't know if this was really a sample. This was half a fluid ounce. There was quite a bit and this took me a long time to get through. This is the Clinique Moisture Surge Hydro Eye Cream. I hated this. Absolutely hated it. Every single time I used it, I hated it. Morning and night. It took me six weeks to finish, maybe more. I might have I might have had this in rotation the last time I did my empties. So it may have been more than eight weeks. The thing with this, you can't tell, but there's little of like those little balls in here that are supposed to have like the extra moisture. But if you look at the, yeah, there's nothing in here. If you look at the component, there's like a little tiny hole that it comes out of. So 
the little balls, the moisture balls would get stuck in the opening and I'd have to mess with it. And, you know, a lot of times like it would just squirt out or something like that. Like who approved this design packaging? They need to get fired because it was terrible. I did not like this. I have right now, after I finish this, I have the moisture surge that doesn't have the little bubbles in it in the tub. And that, that's way better. Like just put it in a tub. It's fine. I don't see why if it had like a blocking ball, you would put it in something that has such a small opening. It doesn't make sense to me. Do not buy this. Even on top of that, like outside of just the packaging issue, the product was not good. The new one that I have, the Moisture Surge without the balls, that's more creamy. This was clear with balls in it. I keep, how many times have I said balls? <laughs> that one is much better, much more moisturizing than this one. I, I did not understand this at all. I'm going to save my very favorite thing for last because I feel like I have just been ranting this entire video and only talking bad about negative things. So we'll say my favorite thing for last. Let's go over this. This is the, these are two different products, but they're similar. So I have two samples of the Peter Thomas Roth. This is the Water Drench Hyaluronic Glow Serum, these two. And then this is the Water Drench Hyaluronic Cloud Serum. So this is just supposed to be more glowy. I don't think that my skin likes hyaluronic acid. I don't think it dislikes hyaluronic acid. I'm not seeing a lot of positive effects from hyaluronic acid. Now I do know you have to put a moisturizer on after, like you can't just put hyaluronic acid on, expect it to moisturize your skin. There needs to be something to pull the moisture into your skin. I do know that. So I'm not applying it incorrectly, just to be clear but I don't notice a huge difference when I use it. Mostly my skin responds to vitamin C, very old school, been using vitamin C for years and years. I mean, vitamin C has been around for a long time and I think it's just a tried and true and it works for my skin. I notice my skin is brighter when I use a vitamin C serum. When I use a hyaluronic acid serum, I'm just not seeing the results I wanna see. I'm not seeing enough of a difference to wanna continue to use a hyaluronic acid product. Now, I know there are people who have a 20 step skincare routine. I am not that person. I try to keep it very simple. I double cleanse. After that, I apply a serum, my eye cream, and a moisturizer. And at night, sometimes an extra moisturizer or a facial oil, that's it. I only go through one serum at a time. So the hyaluronic acid is not gonna be the serum in my step. I'm gonna use a retinol or just something a little bit stronger. I don't like this and I also think that the Peter Thomas Roth water drench line is also overhyped in general. <laughs> Three things left. Let's go over this small one. This is the Paracone MD. This was a moisturizer cold plasma plus cream intensive hydrating complex. I use this as a night cream when I was using the Elemis, I think. And this was really nice. It was very rich. It was very moisturizing. Just I didn't like the smell. Like the smell is too earthy for me. I wouldn't say I'm very, very picky with scents, but I am a little bit picky. I like earthy scents, but there's, there's a difference between herbal earthy and like dirt, just dirt earthy. And this was dirt. This smelled like dirt. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy using it. It was very nice on the skin. It gave good results, but can't get over the scent. So I wouldn't repurchase it. I will say though that for a sample, like this is a glass jar, is really nice. That's about its only redeeming quality. And the last two things I have, I'm gonna save this. This is the Elemis Cleansing Balm. I purchased like a trio of these for around holiday, Black Friday, when they were running a deal because the cleansing balm is quite expensive and I wouldn't purchase it if I didn't get a good deal on it. This was nice. I understand the hype for the cleansing balm. However, I finished this one tub up in one month and it smells beautiful. This is the earthy that I like. This is so spa-like. I could smell this all day long. I love the scent of it. I loved how it performed. 
I just can't get out of my head the price point and I can't get over the price point. Is this something I'd pick up every now and then as like a treat? Sure. If there is a good deal, yes. This is a great, great cleansing balm. I just had, before this, I had L'Occitane cleansing oil and that was $20 and it lasted me over six months and I used it every single day and I used it to take off swatches so it probably would have lasted me longer had I not used that. That is more worth it. I can't get that out of my head versus what the $50 for this that lasted me one month no thank you, I'll take the money that I save and buy a Tom Ford quad or something that's just more expensive that I can have for longer than something that's only gonna last me a month. There's not enough in this to make me wanna keep repurchasing it. However, I will give it to them. Like I do, I do understand the hype behind this product. And the very last product that I have to talk about, my favorite out of everything, is this. I've had this in an empty before. This is the Declore Night Balm. I have the Neroli version. So I finished the first one. I talked about it in an empty. I got this, not this one, the one previously. I got it in Cyprus when I lived in Cyprus and the spa lady, I got a facial and the spa lady upsold me on this night balm and I bought it and it was like $60 and I used it all up and I became obsessed with it. Once I finished it, my skin actually missed it. My skin missed it. Not just me like inside, but my skin physically missed using that night balm. So I went back online and I purchased two. I purchased this one and I purchased a backup just so I had it. And it was like $23, which is so much more affordable than the markup that I was sold on. We won't talk about that. Now that it's $23, I can't get enough of this product. I use it maybe twice a week. It's kind of like a very thick Vaseline. You use it after you're done with all your skincare. It's like an extra boost of moisture. It really holds everything in. Vaseline is really the best comparison I can give it because that's what it's like. It just, it smells better. It has very similar scent to Elemis, if you know that scent. This one... This is just something that I will always, always have. It looks very small, but it's deceiving. This this probably lasted me. I mean, I bought this around Black Friday, so at least, what is that, five or six months? This lasted me quite a long time just for one. So two a year, like I can't get over that. I have some facial oils that I want to get through and use up before I crack open my, my next one. So I am gonna try and finish those, but after that, I am done, like sold. I will not be purchasing another facial oil. This is everything that I need in just that extra boost of moisture. It also is healing. It feels like an ointment. It's, it's the best possible thing out of everything. I cannot, if there was anything out of all my empties that I've ever recommended, it would be this product. I don't see it talked about enough. I think that it does wonders for the skin, especially if you have really dry skin. I use this a lot more than twice a week during the winter when my skin was just feeling dry and cracked. This saved my skin and my skin misses it when I don't use it. I just wait for a night where I'm like, okay, my skin feels like it just needs this slathered on. I absolutely love this product. I will not stop talking about it ever. It is my favorite skincare product that I've ever tried. Other things, you know, I'm like, okay, I could take it, I could leave it, it's fine, there's probably better. Like, no, I will not buy anything else after this. This is it, this is it for me. We are in it together for life. Those are all the products that I've used up in the last two months. Doing this every two months, I think is a little bit better than me than every month like I was doing it before. Let me know down below in the comments if you like seeing it every month or if you prefer just maybe a little bit of a longer video that I do every other month. But I love doing empty videos. It just keeps me accountable for using products that I have and makes me recognize that I don't need to just store and hold on to products and actually just use them. So let me know down below your thoughts. Are you also just trying to change habits and stop having a hoard and stash of just skincare, body care, lotions? I know so many people, they have you know 50 lotions under their bathroom cabinets. 
are you trying to change that? Or were you just never that person and you're better than me? Let me know down below. But that's where I'm going to leave you all. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.